hey guys welcome back it's a girl funny lungu back with another reaction video if you're new welcome if you're not welcome back thank you for continuously subscribing you guys are the best uh keep doing what you're doing we really appreciate your efforts uh follow us on funny and jesse 2.0 that's our second youtube channel check it out and enjoy the content that we put out so today I'm going to be reacting to how the how Quran changed the world question and answer session. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Jazakallahu khayda Sheikh Husayni. We'll now have a chance for the question and answer session. As before, we'll start with the first question from the front mic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother, my question is simple. We feel there is a distance between Quran and mankind because when I reach my home, I keep my Quran on the shelf because most of our brothers doesn't know how to handle Quran. They doesn't know what need to be done, what need not to be done while handling the Quran. Can you please explain these? What is the don'ts to Quran, do's and don'ts to Quran and tell the way how to get close to Quran which changes the mankind. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. If I'm not wrong, the brother is just asking how do we handle the Quran? How do we honor and respect the book of Allah? There are many ways. Majority of the Muslim today, do you know how they respect the Quran, brother? The people that I know, not here, inshallah. This Quran, they keep in a high place, very high. And they wrap it with some beautiful clothes. And one Jumaat, every Jumaat, they bring it down and they kiss. And then put it back. <laughs> one way. They love the Quran. They respect the Quran. But they don't read the Quran. They dare not even touch the Quran sometimes. But that is not the way for you to respect the Quran. The Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad not in the form of a book, but Wahyu from Jibreel, from Gabriel. Iqra. Bismi Rabbikallah. So you must read. You want to honor the Quran, you must read the Quran. Of course, it is highly recommended before you open the Quran and read. You have wudu. Is highly recommended. It's not wajib. It's highly recommended. Is to have the wudu and then you read the Quran. When you read the Quran, you must read with a pure intention, ikhlas lillahi taala. And you read the Quran, Allah wants you to dabbur slowly. Don't read like a parrot. Read it slowly, ayah wa ayah. And after reciting, before this, Yasir Qadi have informed you. Yeah, and then after that, it is your duty to understand what you read. That's how you respect the Quran. Not just read without understanding. After understanding, it's your duty to act upon the Quran. If not, the Quran will be a hujja against you. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. We'll have the next question from the sister's mic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Uh, Sheikh, Buddhism is becoming a very popular religion in the West. New Age spirituality is becoming very popular and it's based on Buddhism among other things. Can you tell us why you chose Islam although you were raised Buddhist? And also, can you offer a prayer, a dua for Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and Bayt Al-Maqdis which is now being destroyed as we stand here speaking about love Allah and Allah. peace and offer a prayer to our brothers and sisters who are defending it Amen. with their lives Allah so Allah. that maybe one day Allah we Allah. will pray in it insha'Allah Jazakumullah It's a duty of all Muslim brothers and sisters when you hear some Muslim brothers some holy sacred area is being uh, destroy or been disrespect by other people for us to ask Allah to help us at least to save our Iman first and then may Allah save Al-Aqsa 
about Buddhism. Yes. Now the main teaching of Gautama Buddha, we know what is Buddhism. Buddhism derived from the root word of Buddh in the Sanskrit word. Buddh means the awakening. Now he, Gautama, suddenly want to find the truth. He have the awakening, but he do not know what is the truth. And he left the palace to seek for the truth. At the end of the day, Alhamdulillah, according to my understanding, he was making kalwa, like how Moses making kalwa, how Prophet Muhammad making kalwa. And there he was enlightened by Allah. This is what I know. When he was enlightened by Allah in the Sanskrit word called Buddha, the enlightened one. The teaching of Buddha is only two. Sukkah wa Dukkha. In Arabic, Bashiran wa Nazirah. And his doctrine, the Dharma, now after I became a Muslim, I understand the teaching of Buddhism, of Gautama Buddha, more than when I was a Buddhist before. But it's Allah's Hidayah. I do not know whether he was a prophet, but I believe what Allah said, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا عَنِ اعْبُدَ اللَّهُ وَاسْتَنِي بُتَّاهُدْ Because I don't find any of his teaching against the Quran and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وَاللَّهُ عَلَمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلَمْ Sister, inshallah, we hope all the brothers, not only we are going to pray here, every day when you heard any bad news about what is happening to the Ummah, don't forget to pray for them. Anytime you hear a Muslim pass away, at least you say, Allahumma qfir lahu warhamhu wa'afihi wa'fu'anhu. At least you say that, brothers and sisters. Yeah? We will pray for them. I mean, inshallah. But brother, you're saying that the teachings of Buddhism are the same as the teachings of Islam? Even though they have reincarnation and all these other things? No, they believe there is life like how we believe there is life after death. We believe in hereafter, they believe in hereafter. But there's a lot of bid'ah and kurafat in the teaching of Buddhism now. They have created a lot of changes and make a lot of changes. They said Buddhists, Gautama Buddha don't talk about God. Who said he don't talk about God? He worship, he worship something. But people said he don't worship God. He don't talk about God. This is what they say, not what Gautama say. Now, you are asking me about my experience. Now, when I came to Islam, I found that Islam here to confirm also what was taught by Guatama. I never see anything against it. Is he a prophet? Wallahu alam bisawat. Because it's not mentioned in the Quran his name. And we know that the prophet have said only 25 prophets is mentioned in the Quran. There are more than that. There are 120,000 of prophets been sent. And only only Allah knows where they were sent. So I'm here not to pass any judgment, but through the experience I've gone through, I don't find any of his teaching is against the Quran and the Sunnah. Wallahu alam bisawah. Jazakallah. The next question from their brother's mic. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Chinggis. I'm a university student. So my question is, we all know and we all believe that there is a destiny and everything is predestined. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-knowing. And my question is, so why in the very end day, mankind will be judged by their deeds? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what I'm going to in like future 10 years or whatever He gives me in my life, he can put me like in a few seconds to Jahannam or Jannah. No. Alhamdulillah, brother. We believe in what has been fated. The Qadar and Qada. And that is what the teaching of Buddha, Karma. In Buddhism, they call Karma. Qadar and Qada. Now, your question is why 
there is a judgment day. Is that what you asked me just now? Uh, yeah. Is we have been fated, what yes, is going to happen, Allah knows best. So then why must Allah judge us again? He know. He know we go to hell or go to paradise. Why must he waste his time judging us again? It's a beautiful question. Allahu Akbar. Allah is here to show us how fair, how just He is. He knows what we have been doing, how good we are, how bad we are, how ugly we are. But maybe deep in our heart, we still want to argue. I think I am, I'm not that bad. I think God should be kind to me, should be just to me. So before we ask anything, He makes sure that He is fair and just because one of the attributes of Allah is Allah Abdur. Means He is just. To show you that He is here to show you everything. What Allah said, فَمَا يَعْمَلْ مِسْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَا يَعْمَلْ مِسْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَى Everyone, you commit even as small as an atom of good deeds or bad deeds, Allah will show it to you. So that you cannot say, Oh Allah, you forget. You remember I do this thing before? You remember I helped one poor lady? No, Allah knows. So here Allah is going to show us, He's going to demonstrate His fairness to everyone. That's why the judgment day is important. You understand it, brother? Yeah. yeah. Inshallah. As long as you do what you must do here, what Allah wants you to do sincerely for Him, nothing for you to worry. Inshallah. Jazakallah. Jazakumullahu khaira. That is all the time that we do have for the question and answers. So please, a big thank you for our dear Sheikh Hussein Yee. Alhamdulillah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdi ashadu la ilaha anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaih. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once upon a time, before the Quran was revealed, all of you live like enemies, hate each other, fighting against each other, abusing each other. We should respond to the Quran. The Quran has changed us. Money cannot unite the heart. Gold cannot unite the heart. Only with the hidayah of Allah. The Quran have changed people once upon a time who live in darkness to the nur of Allah. An interesting video. Um, I loved how he spoke about how people treat the Quran, putting it at a high place. And um, I feel like he should take care of books, your holy books, your books, whatever it is. And people that, anyone that has a hard copy of something, they know how to uh, like really, really take care of it. You're just not throwing it around. You're just not putting it down where a child can reach it. No, you're not doing that. You're going to put it in a place where you know that here is very very safe to keep it like here i just won't leave it to collect dust you know i just won't ignore it here is what i can see it here is where i can take it from each and every day to go through one or two verses and that was very very entertaining and then coming to the buddhist islam thing of afterlife i really loved his take on it it's actually my first time reacting to Husseini and I really love how he explained the idea of afterlife and how the Muslims look at it and how the Buddhists, those who practice Buddhism look at it and it's something to think about you know just because someone is using a different term from yours and you are saying this doesn't mean there is much of a difference is what we need to understand we have to look into some of these things at the end of the day and judgment day, I mean judgment day scares a lot of people but to have your sins read out is something else. At the end of the day I feel like whatever God says is fair is what people should believe is fair, you know. However it's going to go down. We may not really know the precise way as how everything will be carried out but we have been given this narrative or idea of how it's going to go down. And people take it differently some will take it the literal way some I don't know it's just different from one person to the other if you have any contributions concerning this let me know down below if there's any videos by or saying that you'd love me to react to let me know down below just give me the name or the link and I'll be sure to check them out 
make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video